Hello and welcome back to the Bundesliga show, everyone. Uh, some technical issues going on there with our intro video not playing, but anyway, uh, all, all is well. Um, hope everyone is doing well this evening. Uh, apologies if my internet's a bit dodgy tonight. All of a sudden, it's decided to just go absolutely haywire. Um, so hopefully, we'll uh, we'll struggle on through. Um, am I am I coming through okay, Mark? Yeah, it sounds fine. Yeah, it's all good so far. <laughs> so far then um yeah tonight i think we're just gonna do uh as it's our last last show uh for the world cup break uh we think we're gonna do a bit of a uh a hindrun the you know, from 18th up to first place uh, and basically kind of just kind of go through and, and see how everyone's done so far this season um rather than looking back at uh, match week 15 as entertaining as it was we just want, want to kind of summarize how everyone's done so far so that's what we'll be doing we'll kind of be grading each team um you know so a star being the best and e or f being a failure uh from the their team's point of views and, and maybe looking ahead to after the world cup break at some point as well um but anyway the, the usual bit of admin um before we get going uh you know we've been in partnership with Bundesliga boxes and Bully News throughout this season uh, and going forward as well. So great to have them on board. And it's been um, really good fun having Runa and Peter on the show so far this season. And long may that continue. Uh, please do make sure that you like, comment and subscribe to the channel. So we've got ourselves uh, over the 700 marker now and are pushing upwards. So that's brilliant. Keep that coming. Um, please do get involved tonight. Uh, if you've got any questions, so obviously myself and Mark's last show before we have a bit of a break. So, yeah, make sure you do smash that like button. It'd be really appreciated. Um, hi there, Mark. What, what are we thinking? No more Bundesliga for two, two and a half months. Can't believe it. Yeah, it's shocking, isn't it? It really is shocking. Yeah, it's, uh, I can't believe it, really. It's, uh, it seems like a, a second pre-season, really, in a weird way, doesn't it? It's going to be like, what, 10, 11 weeks before we next see a Bundesliga game, yeah? I'm still getting over it, to be honest with you. I shed a few tears yesterday in that <laughs> last game of the, <laughs> before the break. But, yeah, it's... Um, yeah, it's going to be a long break. I mean, obviously, we've got the World Cup, but there doesn't seem to be that much fanfare at the moment over this World Cup. Does there? I don't know what it's like over in the UK, but over here, a lot of people just don't seem that into it at all. Do you know what I mean? So, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I think, obviously, it's been controversial for ages, the Qatar World Cup, but I didn't expect it to be like this when it came so close. So, like, I think they did a survey on one German TV uh, podcast, and they said that maybe up to 50% of football fans are going to boycott this World Cup. So it's like, it's just a really strange uh, like situation right now. I mean, it's like a week till the World Cup, but it just doesn't doesn't feel like the World Cup, does it? I don't know. It's a weird kind of uh, emotion at the moment, really. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it is really strange um, right now. But anyway, we're here to talk about Bundesliga and celebrate how amazing, you know, the league's been so far this season. We've had lots of different stories to, to look at um you know successes for certain teams uh the inevitable uh, at the moment Bayern uh being on top um but loads of other kind of stories that have come out of it so yeah we'll, we'll kind of get started uh from from 18th place all the way up to first and just take uh, a few minutes to talk about each team and, and how they've got on um so starting in, in obviously we have Schalke uh FC Schalke uh they were obviously promoted from the side of Bundesliga last season after uh, one season in the second division. Mark uh, did very well to get themselves straight back up and not kind of doing a bit of a Hamburg and, and staying in, in the second division for a long time. Um, but then gave the job to Frank Kramer, which um, was a bit of an interesting one. It was a move that never worked out. Probably one of the biggest mistakes that they've made in recent times really at, at the club. And has since quite recently brought in Thomas Rice, obviously who started the season at Balkham, who are down there with them. Um, but yeah, your impressions so far of Schalke, um, kind of give us a, a few notes of what you've thought about them so far this season, and then get if you want to give them your grade and I'll do the same. Yeah, sure, but not very good at all for Schalke, really, has it? I mean, obviously, only nine points from 15 games, like about 0.6 points per game. One thing for sure, if they don't... Uh 
start improving, then they're going to um, get relegated, basically. You know, I mean, obviously, I think, ironically, two of the best performances did come in the last two games. So that, that's the one thing that gives me a bit of hope. I mean, obviously, they beat Mainz in, in week 14, which was like their own, only their second win of the season. And then I thought they were OK against Bayern Munich. I know they still lost 2-0 and Bayern deserved to win that game. But to be honest, I thought they might get hit for five or six in that match, in truth. And I think they took a respectable 2-0 defeat. You know, I, I say respectable 2-0 home defeat. It's never good to lose 2-0 at home. But when you're playing a Bayern side on that form, I do think Rice has improved them a little bit, but not as much as what people are expecting. That's the problem. I think he's had five or six games in charge now, and he's only got the three points from that win against Mainz. All the other games were losses. So, you know, they're just not scoring enough goals. Only 13 goals in the 15 uh, games is not enough. 32 conceded, which is over two a game. It's just none of the stats really add up, you know. And if you're looking for top performers, you're really struggling out there. I mean, obviously, Kraus, Tom Kraus, who signed from Nuremberg in the summer, he was, I was looking forward to seeing him, but, you know, he seems as though he's not playing in his best position and he's been played too attacking, maybe a little bit, and it, it's not really worked out for him. Tirod has done okay, I would say. Obviously, he's had a lot of question marks. Uh, over how good he is at this level. But I think he's on like four or five goals, which is okay for a struggling side. You know, Shvalov struggled in net. The defence has been injury ravaged time after time, which they've been unlucky with. But uh, yeah, I think they're probably, I think some of the halfway point, they're definitely the favourites to get relegated. I think that's clear. Out of all 18 teams, they'll be the favourites. And I, I, to be honest, I can't give the season any either than a two out of 10 so far in truth. Uh, you know, obviously they are a newly promoted side, so you don't expect them to be in the top half or the European places. But just the level of performance has been really poor, I think. And, you know, I, I would say two out of ten. What about you, Rory? Yeah, similar sort of thinking. Um, I think naturally, as you mentioned, Mark, lowest scoring side in the league. You know, the stats adding up against them. Um, I just think they're under-equipped, really. To, to perform at this level consistently. Um, so, I, as you mentioned, a couple of their players have struggled. They're kind of like the bigger names for Schalke. You know, Alex Kraus come in, not done as well as maybe some people would have hoped and thought. Salazar was given quite a lot of um, early season praise and a couple of good bits and bobs. Drexler as well. Um, you know, here, there and everywhere, scattergun performances without any kind of level of consistency. Um, so, yeah, no no great surprise that they are struggling um, uh, with that in mind. Um, yeah, if we're looking at the, the Hinrunde form uh, and we're scoring that out of 10, I'd give them a three. Split the difference between yourself and Mark, uh, myself and Mark, and we'll give them a 2.5 maybe. Um, but... Uh, yeah, it's been a struggle for them. If there are any Schalke fans watching now live in the chat or uh, or afterwards, it'd be really interesting to hear and see your thoughts on the club, uh, around the appointments, around the players. Uh, obviously, they had, um, you know, the incident with Gazprom as well, a little bit, well, not this season, obviously, a while ago. Um, so that probably didn't help from a financial standpoint. Summer transfers. Um, yeah, so I think it's fair to say that Schalke have had a returning first third uh, to forget, but because of the World Cup break, you know, they won't have too many players going to the World Cup, so maybe they can start to push on uh, once they return in a couple of months' time. So, moving on, uh, 17th place is next. So, the second automatic relegation spot is currently being occupied by VFL Borkum. Um, You know, had a really bad start things were looking grim. There was all this stuff around, you know, whether Rice would stay or go. Contract, you know, negotiations weren't going too well. And obviously, as, as a result of their poor form, he, um, you know, he got the chop. Uh, but at the same time, Mark, they have beaten Frankfurt, Union Berlin and Gladbach. Yeah. So it does does go to show that Bolkham have got something there. And, you know, um, again, a mixed bag. Uh, it's a poor start. For them, but if we were looking ahead, there's certainly something to go off in that regard. Yeah, for me, the the big turning point was the appointment of Thomas Lech. Like, I'll be honest, I didn't know much about him at all. Obviously, the new manager after Rice was fired, he came in from Vitesse Arnhem from 
the Netherlands. I didn't know even I'd never even heard of him, if I'm being honest with you, when he got appointed. But he's won four of his games in charge. They didn't have a single win on the board. They only had one point picked up, which was under the interim manager the game before he came in. He's actually won four games. So he's picked up 12 points and I think eight games since he came in. So full credit for that. I mean, they didn't look like a side that would get anywhere. They wouldn't win a single game all season early on, let's be honest with that. But, but no, I think they've been really good recently. And obviously winning the last two games of the, the Hinrunde, which is absolutely massive, you know, wins over obviously Gladbach and uh, Augsburg at the weekend. Massive, massive results. I think Manuel Riemann's found his form again after a poor start. That's obviously massive. He, despite being the goalkeeper, he's one of the key players, isn't he? Really, really good. I think Danilo Suarez as well has come better. He had a poor start to the season after a good year last year. Odets as well has been decent in recent weeks. I, I do like Anthony Garcia as well, the uh, defensive mm -hmm. midfielder. I think he's probably their best player overall, isn't he? And uh, there is a bit of quality in the midfield and attack. You know, I think it's uh, Kevin Stöger has done pretty well. Uh, Zola has not really stepped into the uh, shoes at all, though, of obviously uh, Polter, has he? Which is a bit surprising in some ways because, you know, obviously he was the one that was expected to uh, fill in for Polter, who left for Schalke in uh, pre season. Obviously, they got unlucky with Asano's injury early on in the season because he's a good attacker as well, but he could potentially be back for the rook run days, obviously the extended yeah. rook run. Days. So I don't think it's all that bad for them at the moment for both of them. You know, I think obviously they're on 13 points from 15 games and they're only actually two points away from complete safety. So, you know, I would say just probably after seven, eight games, they're on a zero for me. I would say they were that bad, but I would say they picked up to a four now under Lech. I really think they've been that good in recent weeks. You know, they've shown a lot of the qualities that they did last season, you know, kind of um, hard to break down, very good at home. They've won three of those four games have been home wins, as you mentioned, over Union, Frankfurt and Gladbach, who are all sides in the top half. So there's definitely hope for them. I really do believe there's hope. And I give them a four. It's still got to be a bit below average because they're only they're averaging less than a point a game. But it's not been a catastrophic opening 15 games for me. Yeah, under par so far, Balkan, aren't they? Um, but that there definitely is hope. I'll, I'll I'll go along with the four. That's what I had in my mind. So yeah, um, I think that's quite safe to siphon them off as that. Uh, yeah, interesting to see where we are in a couple of months' time. Uh, further away, um, as Balam has correctly pointed out in the live chat, uh, VFB Stuttgart are next on on our list. So talking about um, my my favoured side fairly early on in the show. Um, uh, yeah, it, it's been a strange one uh, so far this season from from Stuttgart. I think they were set up to struggle, um, you know, because of the pretty, you know, financially they're not doing overly well. Um, the summer recruitment was beyond underwhelming. Uh, that you know set uh, you know set Pellegrini Pellegrino Matarazzo to you know do what he could with with the team um but yeah the poor, the performances have not been bad it's just a team that don't really know how to get over the line uh and have kind of semi forgotten how to win semi consistently um injuries maybe not as much this season more last season really did not help selling Kalajdzic was a big one although in terms of the one player that we've recruited well has been Gurassi, and I think he's done a really good job replacing him, um, scored some good goals. Uh, but other than, I mean, it's a really good thing that Sugard have put, picked up some of these late wins against Salzburg and obviously against Hertha, because um, if they hadn't, and obviously all these other results have been coming in, they'd probably be looking as firm favourites to go down completely, uh, go straight down. So, um, yeah, I don't know about you, Mark, but I'm uh, I'm wandering around the 4.5-ish mark uh, out of 10 in my head. Yeah, I think we've got to remember that they only stayed up like pretty much with the last kick of the, the season last year, didn't they? So I think you've got to bear in mind when we're doing these ratings, what was the expectation early on? I think all of us had them to be bottom five, didn't we? And that's exactly where they are, third from bottom. Nobody's surprised to see that. In fact, I think we even predicted them to finish third from bottom in the end, didn't yeah, we, Rory? So. so I think nobody's surprised to see them where they are. 
Yeah, it's hard to say. I, I think we've talked about it before, Rory. I think the problem with Stuttgart is you've got... I've never known a, a squad to have a bigger gap in the quality of the players, really, because they do have some really good players. Like, Souza is, like, probably a top European club player. I would say he's that good. Do you know what I mean? I think he's a really talented player. They've got other players like Mavropanos. I think he could play at a higher level, too. I think I'm he's got a real lead. Yeah. I know he sometimes makes errors, but he's got so many good qualities about him. You know, how he gets four and he's a leader and he's strong and everything and fast but they do have some really good players in the squad Endo I really like him as a midfielder he's been a quality player for a while now at this level but then they've got some guys like the likes of Stenzel uh, Furich you know to me they're like lower fight of Bundesliga players if I'm being honest with you if they turned up at Nuremberg I wouldn't be like amazingly happy to be honest with you and I just think that's the reason why you can't have a team in the Bundesliga that have got maybe three four players who are like second league standard and that's the problem with this uh Stuttgart side they've got a very big mix I mean obviously Wimmer I don't think from what I've read I don't think he's going to get the job on a full-time basis and I think that's probably a good thing to be honest with you because as you say he has won three games but I've not been like mind-blowingly impressed with his, uh, his performances to be honest obviously losing very meekly against Leverkusen in what is probably going to be his last game at the weekend mm -hmm. I just think the away form isn't good enough. Have they even picked a single point up away from home this season? I don't, not many. If it's, not many. I don't think they've won away from home. Maybe a couple of draws, but I just think the away form is appalling. And yeah, but then again, it's not been dra drastically bad either. You know, there have been some good performances in there as well. So I would go for a four to be honest. I'd say slightly below average. If they got another two or three points, they'd probably be on a five. I would say, you know, but. As, it, as things stand, they're still below that point a game average, so that's got to be a four for me. Yeah, I'd agree with that, around that sort of mark. Um, yeah, not not too much more to add in that. I think you're right, there is a big difference in the quality uh, of the squad with some players. Uh, Vimmer, I think he's done a good job of steadying the ship. You know, we were winless before that, in fairness. Um, so that, you know, again, that big first W was really important. Still in the cup, but obviously I know we're talking about Bundesliga. Um, so again, but yeah, hard to disagree with uh, these lower points, but you know, we're at the opposite end of the table, so that's natural. So, moving on, on uh, and on to another side that you can almost class, um, kind of similar situation or pattern with with Sugar is Hertha Berlin, um, who sit in 15th place and have again. Performance-wise, so far in the Hinrunde or this first third of the season, have been very steady. Uh, they've competed in a lot of their games. You know, there's not been too many games where they've been completely outclassed. The only clear one was right at the start of the season against, you know, against their rivals Union. Um, you know, but that was very early on in Sandro Schwartz's um, uh, campaign. Uh, one thing that's holding them back is putting the ball in the back of the net. Uh, there are, you know, games of recent note where if they'd just done, you know, the basics of getting that final finish, they would have had a lot more points. Um, the team is full of talented players and I just don't quite get why they're still not doing what they, in their heads, probably should be doing. And probably met many other Bundesliga fans expect more of them, Mark. But for, since we've been doing the show anyway, they just keep on you know, meandering around this area of the table. And again, it with other teams who are bound to start picking up points because Balkan and Schalke and Stuttgart have done recently, it's drawn them back into this relegation fight again. Yeah, definitely. It's just the same old story with Hertha Berlin, isn't it? I think it's like... But one thing I would say about Hertha, though, is that for me, since we've been doing the show, which was like two and a half seasons we've been doing it for now, this is, for me, the best half season they put in during that time, performance-wise. But the fact they've still only got 14 points from 15 games shows exactly why they are where they are as a club at the moment. Because, they, as you mentioned, the goal difference is only minus three, despite mm. losing seven games, you know. That says everything you need to know. Pretty much all of their defeats, apart from the one against Union, have been one goal defeats I, i'd be surprised i think pretty much every defeat they've had has been by one goal actually this season so they're very very close to being a good side but they just 
I, I really don't know what it is with Hertha because I've seen them a few times live this season. I thought some of the football they throw, play through midfield is really, really good. You know, Tussar is at his best period as a Hertha player. He's been good. I think even some of those forwards they brought in, they've not got the goal, but the the goals where they look quality at times. You know, like they look yeah, like they've got some real quality players. Yeah. The likes of Juke and uh, Richter, even Luka Bakio, he's been the talisman this season, but he's been a lot better. Even Kanga, you know, mm. I've seen quality in these kind of players that, you know, if they can just get a bit more confidence and form behind them, regular form, I think they could go up the table. But I've been saying this for too long now and it just never seems to happen, does it? And I think, obviously, that the game we covered against Stuttgart, they had so many chances in that game and ended up getting done in the last minute, didn't they? So... That summed them up. But to be fair, they did get that massive win over Köln on the last day and they did it in style as well with a comfortable 2-0 win. That makes the table look a little bit nicer. But, you know, the fact they're still fourth from bottom and it looks like they are going to be in a relegation dogfight again because they just they don't win enough games of football, as we've said many times. And I think performance-wise, I'd have them possibly even on a six. But with the results considered as well, it's got to be another four, I'm afraid, for her to build in. Yeah, I'll go along with four. Um, right now, hard to yeah say anything more than that because they are underperforming still. So yeah, four, 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 four point five for me. I think that that's only fair. Um, right, moving on. Uh, we've now into fourteenth place, FC Augsburg. Uh, Mark, after a really encouraging start to the season, you know they pulled off some notable some notable wins. Uh, against Leverkusen, obviously the Bayern win, drawn with RB, drawn with Union Berlin. Um, but they have dipped and again kind of find themselves in in and around the bottom third of the table. Um, but there's been a lot of good things going on at Augsburg as well. So mixed bag really for me. Um, going forwards with Borussia, Demirovic, Niederlechner even contributing here and there, getting some, um, you know, Going into some early early leads uh, and and getting uh, pulled back of late though um, has been one thing that's been uh, yeah pulling them back towards the the wrong end of the table mark so um, yeah a, a mixed bag for Augsburg but certainly uh, encouragement from the way that they've been playing football at the very least. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's the key, what you said. Uh, Performance-wise, they've been really good, genuinely good, Augsburg, this season. Like, this has been also the best we've seen from them in two and a half years. They've gone from being a team of grinders who, you know, look to try and nick 1-0 wins from scrappy penalties or corners and things like that to a team that actually plays football, you know, for the first time in quite a while. But I'm so frustrated with Augsburg in a way because I, I don't understand how they're not winning winning games because, they, as you say, they take the lead in so many matches. But I don't know. like It's just funny because I think they do have some decent defenders at the club as well. You know, the likes of, I hate saying his name, but Gail Love, <laughs> I'm going to say. He must be the hardest name to say in the whole Bundesliga. But he's a solid defender. And I think if they can get Reese Oxford back, who was definitely their player of the season last year, he kept them up pretty much, Reese Oxford, last year. He's back now. But it's, um, yeah, I, the fact that they're still so far down, I really genuinely believe they were going to be mid-table this season after the first 10 games or so. But I don't know what's happening. It's not even that they've started playing bad. It's just that things aren't going right for them. You know, I think the problem started when they had that. Th- they were winning 3-0 against Leipzig and got pegged back to 3 all. But even then, you know, they got a good point to Union Berlin uh, midweek. And then against Bolkham, they dominated that game, missed a penalty and ended up getting done in the second half. And it's just, yeah, it's not even that they don't win enough games of football because they, they do win a little bit more than some of the other teams. But I don't know. They're a funny side, Augsburg. But I think they'll stay up. I really do. Because I think before they have got a really good attack for the first time that I can remember in four or five years. You know, Demirovic has been good. Berisha, very good. I think even um, Niederlechner's had a bit of a resurgence this season, haven't he, in recent weeks? But, you know, I, I just think it's... Uh, I think one of the problems they had actually was when Gikovic got injured and that Kubek came in. He didn't really cover himself in glory in the games that he played. He, did, he made a few errors. I think if they had Gikovic the whole season, they'd be maybe four or five points better off than they are now, yeah. at least, you know, because he's been really good, Gikovic, this season. But... I'm a bit worried for them, though, because I'm not sure they can realistically play as well as they did in the Hin and They're still only on 15 points. That's the problem. So I'm going to give them a five, but 
performance wise they've been probably a, a seven even i would go that high for their standards but resources haven't been they've not got enough wins and enough points so it's got to be a five for me yeah five's about right i think i want to push them slightly above that myself uh because i think their performances have merited more than what has seemed to come out points wise so i'd maybe push them 5.1 so they're just above average <laughs> um <laughs> So, yeah, moving on, uh, we're now uh, on to F, uh, FC Cologne, um, who have kind of done a little bit of the opposite to what Augsburg have done. So, Cologne got off to a good start to the season. Um, well, uh, I mean, they were unbeaten for a, a, about six or seven games, although there were a good few draws in there. Um, been more of a second half team so far this season. Um often having to produce fine comebacks to get results. Uh, you know, when I watched them play Stuttgart, it was, you know, case in point, very, very average first half, came back into in the second half. Uh, obviously, they've produced some really good wins, like against, uh, against Borussia Dortmund, a great comeback there to win 3-2. Um but I think just the demands of playing twice a week, Mark, have caught up with them a little bit mm. recently. Um, nat- naturally, be disappointed to have just gone out of the Europa Conference League. But the way that they play under Baumgart, it's a heavy toll to play on the squad that maybe is a little bit thin. Mm. And now that they're out of there, maybe things will start to pick up. But a couple of uh, poor results of late have pushed them down towards the, that yeah, bottom third of the table and you wouldn't have thought that the way that they've been playing under bound guard in any trouble with regards to relegation but they do need to be careful yeah i think they're similar to augsburg as you say like i think early on in the season you were thinking you know comfortable mid table maybe even pushing top half on it if they get a bit of luck you know but I think, um, yeah, for me, the the fact that they didn't get through in the group has really hurt them. I think, you know, I think mo- they were putting most of their energy into the the Conference League this year, and I think they, you know, they they avoided defeat both games against Nice. They drew both matches, and they should have won away from home. It was the Partizan Belgrade games, and they know that they should be beating them at home, really. You know, and I think that would have frustrated them not to get through that group because, you know. It, they should have done at the end of the day. They were the, I think they were the best side performance-wise in the group, and they just didn't put the ball in the back of the net. You know, and that's not usually a problem for Cologne. They do score goals, you know. But in the league, I don't think they've got anything to worry about. As you say, they have dropped off, but I think they just need to get themselves recuperated, and then they'll be okay. And the uh, they'll be back up to. They might be still around 12, 13, but they won't drop any lower than that for me. But as for the rating this season, I think they did get unlucky with Lu- the Lubacic injury as well. He started the season absolutely brilliantly, Lubacic, but obviously he's missed the last five or six games. Kainz has been absolutely brilliant this season as well. Again, as it is most years. I think they've struggled to replace Lubacic in the side because Duda just doesn't really do it for me. I don't know why. I, I thought he was a great signing when they first got him from here to like a year or two ago, but he's never really done it for me. In a, in a Cologne shirt, he's not really had a good half season. I, I think the defense hasn't been great at times. I think Ben O'Schmitz, despite getting that amazing goal the other night against Leverkusen, he's had a bit of a howler of a half season. To be honest, I think he's got like three or four own goals or something ridiculous like that. He did make up for it a little bit with that screamer against Leverkusen, yeah. but he's not had a great half season. I just think defensively they're not looking that great. I still like Schwaber, the goalkeeper. He's still had a, yeah. a solid half season, but the defence, aside from Hector, is not really covering itself in glory. Killian also has not been yeah. that great this half season, but I'd still give them a five. I don't think he's been drastically poor. You know, I think they've fallen off the last three games, but I think, say they could have picked up one win from that, they'd probably still be on a six, really, considering that they had the Europa League two. I wouldn't give them below a five, but yeah, but slap bang five for me. Yeah, that's fair enough. I think I'd probably bump him up to a 5.5. I think the start of the season was really good, as well as the fact that they were in Europe and, you know, they were bouncing off that. So I think, you know, they have done well. And yeah, it is. they've been stretched a little bit since then. But uh, yeah, we shall see where where they get to uh, once we return to action. Uh, and moving on to the next team uh, in the league going upwards, we've got Bayer Leverkusen, Mark. Um very underwhelming so far from from Leverkusen. Uh, you know, last season's 
free scoring, entertainers, third place in Champions League football. Great, you know, debut season from Gerardo Seoni, uh, Seoani, and um, then just <laughs> nothing went right for him. Uh, second season syndrome. Um, a lot of the players just look disinterested. I think, you know, whenever we watch them, uh, they look like they weren't maybe putting in their all, doing the basics. Uh, you desperately miss Florian Verts, but you can't just say because one player's gone and that you just completely down tools. Eventually, it cost him his job, brought in Xabi Alonso. Um, he had has now starting to make an impact on this team, I think. Um, was a bit underwhelming to start with, wasn't he? Um, so, yeah, what are your thoughts on Leverkusen? I mean... As a hindrance goes, you know, or half, you know, a third of the season, it, it's been pretty damn poor, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. To be honest, I think if we were doing this this time last week, you know, and they hadn't got those three wins in the space of six days, which fair play, that was a good going, you know. Yeah. Um, especially beating Union Berlin, Köln, which is a big derby, and then obviously a comfortable win over Stuttgart. That that saved the bacon, basically. Do you know? Because before that. They'd be on a zero, I would say, to be honest with you. It's been that bad. Uh, there's not really been any players, really, uh, that have really, I uh, thought, have had great seasons. You know, as you say, Schick has been dreadfully poor after an amazing season last year. Even hudson Adoy, he's done absolutely nothing, really, since he came in. I thought he was a great signing, to be honest, but he's been disappointing. Even Hlozek, you know, he's not been terrible, but he's not oh, been yeah. great. Probably the one that I would say has had a good half season, really, has been Diaby. He's still been a, a menace in most games, and he's got six, seven goals as well. Yeah. Frimpong as well, uh, to give him his due. Frimpong has also been pretty good, but in general, it's been absolutely appalling, to be honest with you. Yeah, and as you say, obviously, they do miss Verts. I think anyone would miss Verts, but they do have other quality players to bring in. The likes of Demir by Amiri, but Nobody's really done it until this last two or three games, you know, and give them credit. It does seem as though Javi Alonso has turned things around, at least for now, but I'm still not 100% convinced it's going to be a successful season for him, though, because, you know, they're going to be expected to hit the ground running in the uh, second half of the rub run. Uh, but whether they can do that, I don't know. But obviously, at the moment, they've got to be on a... It's still a two for me overall, because, you know, not so much uh, Javi Alonso... I mean, He's yeah. probably on a five, Alonso, I would say. But the overall season has been woeful. Yeah, I mean, for a side with that much quality and that much investment to be in 12th, you know, is, is really, really poor at the end of the day. It really is. And they're on like a two, 2.5. I can't give them any higher than that, really. Yeah, I think, yeah, without those three wins, it's going to be a, a, a one, yeah. basically. So, yeah, yeah. The, those three wins has put them onto about a two, two and a half-ish Um yeah, it's been it's been really poor from Leverkusen, and who says that they don't finish higher? But yeah, if we're reviewing on what we've seen so far, yeah, absolutely, it's been really really poor. Um, before we move on, uh, just come to a question in from from Paul OCB's Paul McGarrigy. So thanks for tuning in, Paul, and thanks for the question. Um, Paul's asked, which Bundesliga team do you think will benefit most from the break uh, for the World Cup in terms of finding their rhythm for the season? And then which team uh, do you think the break would cause the most trouble for? Um, what do you reckon to that, Mark? Who, who's going to benefit, first of all, from, from the World Cup break? Who's going to benefit? Well, yeah, I would say probably a team like Köln, to be honest with you. I think they are really going to benefit. Because as you mentioned, they played twice a week since August, basically. And they don't have the squad to do it. That's the problem. They just... They've, got, they've lost a few players, obviously, Özcan and Modest, who are key players for them, and then they didn't really replace them. I don't think uh, Stefan Baumgart really fancies a Damian, who was like the, the replacement, really. Tigues hasn't been amazing, but I just think they need to get players back, first of all. The likes of Lubacic needs to come back, and I think the likes of Kainz just needs a break. I mean, the guy must have played, like, you know, 30 games already this season going on. If you include the cup, the qualifying round for the Europa League too. I mean, maybe not quite 30, but I bet he's played 26, 27 already. I mean, he just needs a break, you know. And I think they'll definitely benefit. I think they'll come back strong in the second half. And I wouldn't be surprised to see them to turn a few teams over in January, February. Yeah, in terms of the, uh, trouble, I would say, whew, 
Possibly by Munich, actually, because, I mean, That's they've got 16 players going, you know, 16 players. But I think the way that the Bundesliga's scheduled it, they've been kind on the bigger clubs, you know, because obviously teams are going to have a month on top of after the World Cup finishes. So I think uh, it won't be so um, difficult, I don't think, for German teams. Obviously, over in England, I've heard that they're kicking off basically a few days after the final, aren't they? Which is like classic Premier League in many ways, isn't it? But... I think in Germany it won't affect teams too much. But yeah, I would go Köln for the biggest benefactors and uh, Bayern Munich for the biggest losers, really. Yeah. Um, interesting points there. I'd probably agree with the Bayern bit. That's That probably would have been my pick. And you know, Bayern have only really got things to lose, especially now that they're back top of the table because of the break. The only way is down, you know, for them. Mm. You know, they've had their little rough run, but... They've got, as you mentioned, 16 players going to the tournament. Um, like Mane's been included in the Senegal squad. I know he's not, you know, thrived so far on in, in the Bayern team, but who says that he doesn't, you know, do himself even worse? Um, you know, there's so many crucial players that Bayern have going to the World Cup. Most of them will probably go fairly deep into the tournament. So, yeah, they, they could have damage done to their squad in, in, those, in those terms. Um, I think the Benis biggest benefactor surely one of them just has to be Leverkusen just because of the fact they'll have mm. extra time under Alonso yeah. for, for him to actually coach them in, into what he wants them to do um, and, and have some players around him to, to get the shape in place. Got to improve that defence as well, haven't they? Um, I can't make up my mind whether I think the break's going to be good or bad for Dortmund because uh, obviously um, they're going to be taking a good amount of German players you know, the, the likes of which need to refine their form. Adiemi, Schlotterbeck, Sula. Um, will the make up make or break them? If Germany do well, they may well come back on the crest of a wave and take that form into, you know, in, into their club form with Dortmund. But equally, if Germany have a poor tournament, they're only going to have even worse confidence. And, uh, you know, Terzic isn't going anywhere for now. If there's not if they haven't done it now, you know, they're just going to carry on with him for, for the foreseeable, I'd say, then it could get worse for them. So, yeah, really interesting question. Um, Ballon in the comments saying about Hoffenheim as well. It's a good shout in terms of them mm -hmm. needing a break. Yeah. You know, they've not, um, you know, set alight any, any kind of Bundesliga form of late for sure. So really interesting stuff. Um, so many thanks for your question, Paul. Um, and we shall return to the, the climb up the table and speak Hoffenheim. Let, let's cover them. Um, bit kind of service as normal, Mark. A bit up and down. Um, sometimes get a bit of rhythm, then kind of find themselves losing a game that you might not expect them to. Um, I think Jorginho Ruta has been a bright spark. Dabur's shown good form at times. Uh, Cranbridge and Baumgartner, as you'd expect. Um but yeah, and you, they come up to a game where you think they're in form. Like you know, we thought they might do well against Bayern, or we thought they might, they might do well against Dortmund when they had a bit of form. And it just fell flat a bit, really. So I, I don't know what your thoughts are, but kind of service as normal yeah. for them. <clears throat> yeah, it is, but it's still a little bit underwhelming because they have got a really good squad of players actually there at Hoffenheim. You know, obviously they, they managed to get Angelino in as well. I know they lost David Round, but I thought he was a really good replacement, but I've been really underwhelmed by him actually since signing for Hoffenheim. As you mentioned, Ruter is a great player. He's one of those players that's going to be massive one day. You know, he's still a very young guy. He's got the makings of being a real world beater for me, uh, Ruter. I think his skill on the ball, he kind of reminds me of uh, Mbappe in some ways, you know. Like a kind of uh, discount Mbappe in a way, but it's uh, <laughs> nice, you know what I mean. The way he kind of runs the defenders and skips past, and I think he's a really skillful player too. But maybe Labour uh, Hoffenheim isn't the best club for him. You know, maybe he needs to go to like a kind of bigger club. I, I'm not sure really. Um, Hoffenheim is a funny one because they, they don't really get good home crowds. They're one of few teams in the Bundesliga that don't fill the stadium week in, week out. You know, and I think they're kind of limited a little bit because of that. They don't take big away followings either. That has always been a bit of a, a hindrance for them. Performance, I think Kabak has done well. Kabak was a yeah. good signing for them as well. He's got good experience. He's done well. Kabak. I, I'm a bit disappointed with Ak Akpaguma as well, because he was great last season. He's not kicked on from them. Mm -hmm. 
you know, even Grisha Promo, perhaps people are hoping for a little bit more from Grisha Promo as well. Obviously, the sign from Union Berlin. As for a rating, I'm probably going to give them a four, though, actually, because I, I do think they've got a top half squad on paper for me. I think they've got a good player in every position, really, and they should be probably eighth, ninth on paper, really. So they've got to be a little bit below uh, a five. So I'm going to go for a four. Yeah, I'm happy with four. I'll go with that. So, yeah, Hoffenheim, work to do for them um, under Breton Reiter. But, yes, time will tell whether they can pick up in the extended Rook Runda. Moving on, uh, we've now got uh, Mines. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, from their point of view, you know, they've sorted out their poor away form to an extent this season, been much more uh, impressive in that regard. Um, you know, under the safe hands of Boris Svensson, continues to do great work with them. Uh, you know, been in pretty good form of late, which was semi-halted by Bayern. Um, the form of Onisiwo has been really good. Ingvartsen's kind of had a bit of a resurgence. Uh, Johnny Burkhart is now... Um, you know, returning from injury and, you know, it's unfortunately not had his best spell in the team. So, yeah, it's, it's been pretty solid from Mines, I would say. Um, what, what are your thoughts on on the club so far, Mark? Yeah, I think the, the still overachieving because you've got to remember they're one of the smaller clubs in the Bundesliga as well, you know. And obviously for many years before Bo Svensson came in, they were like struggling to stay up every year. And obviously since Svensson came in, they've become a mid-table side. So, I mean, you can't complain about that. It's still above average for me. Mine's been in 10th. I think they've got some really good players. You know, I really like Anton Stach, the midfielder. I think he's had a great season. He's going to be another player that can improve even more as well for me and potentially play for one of the big German clubs. Um, I think Lee, Lee the uh, has always disappointed me a bit for Mines because I thought he was so good... Um, you know, when he played for Holstein Kiel before he went there. And I thought he was going to be a real world beater, but he, he doesn't get enough goals for me in his position. Mm. He should be getting the similar number of goals and assists to what uh, the likes of Kamada do at Frankfurt, and he doesn't really do it for me. But I, I think Onisiwo has possibly been their player of the half season overall, along with Stark. He's been really, really good. Burkhart, unfortunate, because the injuries have just plagued him. I and mean, he was probably their player of the season last year, but he hasn't kicked on due to injuries. But all in all, they're not even going to be close to getting relegated. You know, they've been very good. They've had a few poor performances, as you say, like when they lost 3-0 at home to Wolfsburg recently. But yeah. you're always going to get that with a mid-table side, aren't you? For me, they're just slapped by mid-table like Hoffenheim, really. But the difference is that Mainz have a much smaller budget than Hoffenheim. I think I'm going to go for a, a 6.5 still for Mainz, to be honest, because I just think, you know, they continue to punch above the weight, ultimately. Yeah. Yeah, 6.5, I think is fair. I don't think we want we would put them any higher than a 6.5. So 6, 6.5 is, is good. Uh, right, let's move on to Werder Berlin, the second of our promoted teams and a team that is much further away from the other one. Um, so... Werder Bremen, where do we start with them? They have been the league's entertainers. I mean, many of the teams in, in the division are very entertaining. In, uh, anyway, we weren't really sure what we'd get from Werder because I think at the start of the season, Mark, um, we both said we weren't sure how many goals they'd score, um, maybe try and um, just be solid in that regard and, and not you know concede too many goals. But uh, I think we likened them to the way that Stuttgart played uh, when they first came up a couple of seasons ago. Uh, very entertaining, you know, going for goals, playing some really good football. Uh, the, you know, under Oli Werner, they've done great work. Uh, full Krug and Dusk partnership has been amazing. Obviously, probably Full Krug has been the king ping king pin of the two uh scoring so many goals in the germany squad for the world cup amazing kind of revelation for the for the player to come from you know the the depths of darkness and uh do so well so far <laughs> this season brilliant in the air some amazing performances from himself and the team um some amazing comebacks as well uh, some late goals that that three goal turnaround against dortmund probably the highlight of the season for me, uh, amazing comeback. And, you know, it's not been full Krug and Dusk as well, ably supported by 
the entire squad and team. You know, Vise has been one of their standout players as well. Um, and they recruited really well, uh, I would say, uh, compared to Schalke as well. Wouldn't, uh, I'm not sure if you agree with that or not, Mark. Yeah, I think where do you start really with uh, with Werder? I just think it's been a superb half of the season. There's been a lot of teams that can be really proud of themselves in this top half of the season. And Werder, possibly, possibly even the team of the season, because nobody really fancied them going into this season, as you say. I really, they weren't tipped at all, you know. it's uh, Most people had them down in the bottom three, bottom four, Matt, even at best, like comfortable bottom half, you know, but... As you mentioned, I think Fulkrug and Weiser have just been two of the players of the season, let alone just for Werder. They've been absolutely brilliant, both of them. You know, Weiser, obviously, the signing from Leverkusen, I think they got him, I think he said nobody wanted him and they got him for like €2 million Euros or something like that. And he's been one of the players of the season, really. Absolutely superb. I think he's on like seven assists or something for a newly promoted side from fullback. It's ridiculous numbers, really. Fulkrug, obviously, I mean, he's got himself on the plane to Germany, incredible uh, sorry uh, to qatar i should say absolutely incredible uh effort for there there's been other good players too the likes of anthony young has been really good um Ilya gruev the attacking midfielder romano schmid i think as you mentioned marvin duksch as well has been really good even amos peeper the signing from uh armenia bielefeld has added uh solidity to them as well pavlenka he didn't really cover himself in glory the last time we covered him in the Bundesliga show but I think he's been good at times as well and you know obviously they still lost a few games but you're going to do that as a newly promoted side and to have won as many as you've lost at this stage of the season is a great effort and it's not only been the results it's just been the way they play the way they've entertained the fans the passion with the manager Ollie Hernes obviously it's just been absolutely brilliant from them I'm going to give them a nine to be honest I'm going to give them that high because I just think for a side that nobody fancied People thought they weren't going to score goals and they were just going to have to scrap for every point. To play the way they have done has just been great, really. And I'm going to give them a nine for the first half performance. Very well, a nine, I would say. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what you do to have a 10 as a promoted side after fifth, after 15 matches. But, yeah, they can't be fired off that either because, yeah, they've been absolutely spectacular and <laughs> entertained everyone that's watched them and, you know, given their fans a brilliant ride as well. So long may it continue going into the Rook Runder for Verda. Uh, Okie doke, moving on. Uh, we've got Gladbach next uh, under the guidance of Farke. Um, you know, they've done pretty well, I, I would say. You know, started to push themselves back up the, the table again after a mediocre season last season. Um, you know, Marcus Chiram, Hoffman... Uh, Plier in, in fits and bursts uh, have been superb. Well supported by many of the team. Florian Neuhaus before he getting injured. It's a Kura before he got injured. Jan Sommer, class as always. Um, but there's still that notion of them, much like Hoffenheim, but maybe to a lesser extent being a bit up and down mark. And they do have the capability of just sometimes mm -hmm. losing by four or five goals randomly. Yeah, it's very, very, they're the, possibly the hardest team to rate in this whole thing, to be honest, because I think they have improved on last season. That's the first thing I want to say. You know, I think the performances have been better, but there's been too many poor results in there. You know, they lost to Bochum, they lost at home to Mainz, they got battered away at Werder Bremen, they only drew against Schalke, they've not picked up enough points against struggling teams. And, well, I say struggling. Obviously, Werder and Mainz aren't struggling, but the teams that they should be beating, do you know what I mean? They really should be beating that kind of team. And I just think, yeah, Daniel Farker's done well. I think there's been a lot of good performances. Turam has been brilliant. Hoffman has been absolutely brilliant in recent weeks too. I mean, I watched the game against Dortmund and they were just so good in that game. When they really get going, they're a brilliant side to watch, Gladbach. And they've got so many skillful and... They're possibly even a top four side on paper. I would say they're that good. They really are. Like As you mentioned, Itakura was unlucky because he started really well, but he got that injury and he looked like he'd just come back onto the bench by the end of the season, but not fit enough to start. They'll be happy to have him back. Hopefully he'll get through the World Cup because I guess he's going with Japan as well. So um, it's they're hard to rate because I think they've got a lot of potential. That's what I'd say in there, but there's still too many losses, too many losses and failures to be struggling teams and... 
for me, I'd probably give them a six, but I can't give them higher. But I want to give them higher because there's so many individually, there have been a lot of good performances. Play R, Turam, both had good resurgences this season, but there's not been enough wins and they're not close enough to that top four for me to give them higher than a six. Yeah, uh, very interesting stuff there. I'll give them slightly better. I'll give them a 6.5, moving close, maybe not too close to a seven but yeah so club back pretty decent work so far indeed from them uh moving on to a team that we probably didn't think that we'd be talking about this high up the table but uh we'll be talking about Wolfsburg next um took some time to get going under Nico Kovac we you know have just started to steadily improve under the radar uh, and you know have been on a great little run so um recently Mark and it's timed things really well for them. It's pushed them further up the league. Um, you know, Maximilian Arnold uh, pulling the strings from midfield. Uh, Patrick Wimmer coming back and looking really good down the wings. The Nemecha brothers, uh, obviously, you know, kind of the, the younger brother, Felix, coming to the fore in recent matches. Um, even Omar Marmouche has showed uh, bits of form. Jonas Wins come back from injury. Uh, and Baku as well, um, having a bit of a resurgence. So lot, lots of goods to take from Wolfsburg, but uh, it just took them a little while to get going under Kovac. Yeah, definitely. But when they did get going, they really got going. That's what I would say about them. I mean, I think they're about 12 or 13 unbeaten in all competitions. I think it's been that long, really. I think, uh, you know, I think um, they, they started really poorly and, yeah, they were losing stupid games and things. But then once they got going, they really played well. And it wasn't just it was scraping wins. They were playing really good football as well. And we're starting to see the Nikos Kovac uh, style really imprinted on this team. And there's been a lot of good performances in that first half of the season. I think we've seen a resurgence of Castiles, one of our favourites from the first half of the, uh, the first season we covered the Bundesliga on the show. He had a really poor season last year, but he's really had a resurgence. I do like Mickey van der Fair's side, you know, got into the side the back end of last season under Florian Kohlfeldt, but it's taken it to another level under Kovac. I think the Nemecha brothers have been superb as well. The Nemec, both of them, you know, obviously we thought it was going to be Lucas who took all the kind of plaudits this season, but Felix has come in and really done well as well, the midfielder. So it's going to be really interesting to see them progress. As you mentioned, the player of the season for them so far has been Arnold. Maximilian Arnold has been absolutely brilliant. One of my players of the season so far this year. I just think he's been superb in the games. He's, you know, he's always been a good player, but this season has been one of his best for me so far. Baku has had a resurgence, which is good to see. I think also the fact that uh, Patrick Vimmer came into the side has really improved them too. Gerhard, I think he's got like three or four goals from midfield. There's been a lot of good performances this season. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Jonas Vind get into the side a little bit more as well, because I do rate him. The only probably negative you'd say about Wolfsburg is obviously the, the Max Cruiser situation. I think that's sad because for me, he's a bit of a cult hero in the Bundesliga and I'm sorry to see him potentially end his Bundesliga career in this way. I hope they can find a solution and at least find him a new club for the second half of the season because a player like him should be starting games in the Bundesliga at the end of the day. And I hope that someone can swallow the pride, whichever side it is whether it's the management or whether it's Cruiser himself who's to blame. But I hope they can actually sort something out and get him back on football pitches soon. But overall, I'm going to give them a seven. I think they've been good and I think they can still get even higher. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Seems like um, we're in agreement with Ballum as well. Seven out of ten with the new manager, need more time. Um, so, yeah, great work from then. Uh, moving on speedily, uh, Borussia Dortmund in sixth place. Blimey. Um where do we start with them? <laughs> uh, they've been up and down, up and down uh, under, you know, head coach Ed Terzic. Um, you know, failed to inspire, I guess, too much confidence in those big moments uh, from the Bundesliga point of view. I think, like we've said, we've come across Dortmund a, a good few times already, and we kind of said that they've slept walked through the season, never really got going, relied on individual brilliance, uh, been absolutely you know castrated by injuries of course um and one outstanding player is Jude Bellingham um what what more can you say the strikers haven't worked out many of the uh, like Schlosserbeck looked like a brilliant signing at first but 
I mean, at the weekend, wow. I mean, if we did a match 15 review, we would have been talking about him a lot because he was all at sea again. Um, so, yeah, Mark, thoughts on Dortmund? Yeah, pretty much what you said. I mean, there's only the only real play, there's probably two players, actually, I would say three players, I would say, that have been good. Now, as you say, Bellingham's been head and shoulders above the rest. I would say Coble has been good when he's played. They were unlucky, obviously, with the fact he got injured for a few games, which they dropped some points there as well. But they've continued to drop points since he came back, really, haven't they? Um, and also, uh, the other one I would say is Sula, actually. I think he's been good in parts, mm. too, even though he's playing right back, which is a little bit strange, to be honest. I think Schlotterbeck's been my disappointment of the season. I was really looking forward to seeing him, but he, he's defensively, he's just been useless at times, really. like He keeps getting caught out of position time after time. And I know a lot of German people don't want him to start in the World Cup as well, which is like surprising because he looked like a shoe-in, basically, at the... Um, didn't he? Like about six months ago, you said he's the first name on the team sheet, but not now. Like it just doesn't look good enough at the highest level. It's as simple as that. And obviously, I, I feel bad saying this because I loved it. Again, we we gave him so much love on this show last year when he played for Freiburg, but he's just not done it, pure and simple, you know. And I'm still questioning Terzic. In truth, away from home, they've just not been good enough, and they could easily have lost another two games on top of the six they already lost. The game against Frankfurt, that was daylight robbery in the final oh, yeah. sense, that was. And also the Freiburg game. Freiburg. Freiburg dominated them until that horrible mistake from Flecken. And, and then they ended up winning the game in the last 10 minutes. But they should have, should have another two defeats on the board at the end of the day. And it's just not been good enough and really not good enough at all. And um, the likes of Adi Amy and Modest have been woeful in truth, to be honest with you. They've just not got going at all. Marlon continues to be useless. And I'm going to go for a three out of 10, to be honest. Three out of 10. Yeah, very below par. Um, I feel like I'm being too generous compared to you, Mark. Maybe I'll give them a 3.5, but yeah, they, they have been rubbish. Only because I love Jude so much. Um, <laughs> yeah, Balam kind of um, saying doesn't want to sound frustrated, but I think BBB only wants second place in top four. Um, Mukoku as well, shout, yeah, Balam mentioning Mukoku, who has been good as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely work to do for Dortmund and not a good hinrunder. Next up is uh, Union Berlin have slightly uh, dropped below the top four um, from a, a recent dip in form, Mark. But, I mean, they've just been a breath of fresh air, you know, and recent results, yeah, you know, they dropped off a little bit. Uh, the form of Geraldo Becker and Sibaciu has not been as good as it was early on the season. But, They've just given us a story, haven't they? Uh, you know, and it's been so refreshing, enjoyable. Um, I think, you know, before we go much further, it's just nice to kind of reflect on something that we didn't expect. And, you know, they might drop off and come wherever, but for a long while, they just had a hell of a ride and I'm sure the fans would have just had the ball, basically. Yeah, just so much credit for them, even though it almost hurts to see them in fifth, really, doesn't it? Yeah. After, I think they're another side that have fallen victim of a, a backup goalkeeper as well. I'm going to be honest with you here now, because when they had uh, Felix, uh, Frederick Renov, uh, Renov in net, the Danish number one, he was just as rock solid. You know, they barely conceded a goal. Since he got injured, they've shipped 11 goals in three games since, since he got injured. I mean, that... You know what I mean? That's pretty much as much of what they conceded in the whole rest of the season. In fact, it is. It's more They conceded more in the last three games than they did in 12 games before that. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. the only thing that's missing is Renner, basically. And I'm not going to blame it all on Grill, the backup goalkeeper, but he wasn't very good in the three games he played. Let's say that much. And I think, uh, but yeah, let's be and stay positive with Union Berlin because there's been so many quality moments. You know, let's not forget they also got through in the Europa League group as well, which is a massive achievement. This is a club with a tiny budget, you've got to remember, really a tiny budget. There's been so many good performances. Rierson, Diogo Leita has been really good. Robin Knocher, Christopher Trimmel, you know, Mark Morton Thorsby has come in and replaced Permel really well. Rani Kadir has been brilliant. Harbour has been a good sign. And then obviously 
until probably the last five games, I would say, obviously, Jordan and Becker as well. But they did drop off a little bit, which could have been part of the reason why they didn't win as many games in the last five. But all in all, it's still a nine for me because, you know, Union Berlin simply shouldn't be anywhere near the top four on budget. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. and also getting through Europe as well. I mean, it's just incredible. And they're still in the cup. So, I mean, let, let's just give them a nine still because it, the only way it could be better is if they were top of the league or in the top four, really, isn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, they've done the job that the likes of RB and Dortmund should be doing for, you know, for us for the first part of the season. And, you know, maybe RB and Frankfurt and who knows, who, someone else might challenge Bayern a bit more in, in the Rook Runda. But, yeah, amazing. Great work from them. Uh, right, moving on to uh, the top four. So, Eintracht Frankfurt. Um you know, continue to do great work. I think we had a question about Frankfurt during our Q and A watch along last week, um, and you know they've been doing some really good work under Glasner. Great squad that they've now built. Uh, it would be would have been so much more fun if they'd had uh, Kostic along for the ride as well with them qualifying in the Champions League. Really starting to thrive in the Bundesliga after a bit of a slow start. Uh, Daichi Kamada has been amazing. The signing of you know, uh, that man, Mario Goetze, back in the Germany squad, what a story that is. You know, but maybe the signing of the season, Kolo Moani, what a baller. I mean, he, he's made the Europa League hero uh, in the shape of Rafa Bore become redundant uh, on, <laughs> on the bench. And they've got Alario on the bench as well. Um, yeah, thrilling to watch. Lindstrom, yeah, just, yeah all these players have been brilliant for for frankfurt and you know they're looking like a strong shout for top four as they now sit yeah i mean you just mentioned my player of the season so far and it's that man colo moani i think i just cannot believe how good he is really like if he can just work on his finishing a little bit more at times he'll be he'll be like the best striker in the world for me <laughs> he's been like the guy's an absolute machine i've not seen a player like him in years literally the way he, he just picks up the ball and just like it sticks to him like glue doesn't it it's incredible and he's very unselfish as well he's got like 10 assists so far is just incredible on top of his goals and he scored goals in Europe too big goals in Europe and it's just been wow like for me he's got to be the player of the season so far as you mentioned there's been other quality players too Lindstrom has gone on to be the player we hoped he would be last season he's improved further he's added goals to his game some good goals as well in there I think a few really really good efforts and as you mentioned uh, Kamada's found his form again from two years ago he's been brilliant even the defense has been better for me as well the likes of Tutor and Dicker have improved Trap has got back to his greatest form and it, they've just been brilliant to watch too you know I think the only thing that Frankfurt could have done is they've lost they've not won a couple of games that they should have won at the end of the day that's the only thing that the Dortmund one sticks in mind yeah but like it, maybe the finishing even though they have scored 32 goals in 15 games which is a bit harsh to say the finishing's not good but in key moments they, they could do with that key goal do you know what I mean but it's not much criticism because again they're another side that have had a brilliant first half of the season I'm going to give them a nine as well because the progression in the Champions League is massive you know it's absolutely massive for a club like them in their first season in the Champions League to qualify through the group is like a massive effort and they had to win those last two games as well and mm. to do that on top of maintaining the top four form in the league and I think they're still in the cup as well aren't they uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they're still in the cup. And, yeah, they've got to be a nine for me. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. I think I would have said 8.5 on Bundesliga form. But when you throw in the Champions League, yeah, why not stick them up to a nine? And um, That's absolutely fair play. Uh, right, RB Leipzig. Um, and we'll kind of run this into what um, Ballon has asked about um, Marco Rosa and, and the new manager um, so far. Again, bit of a slow start to the season uh, and similarly so in the Champions League, but now starting to get going, starting to look like the team that they should be with that quality. Uh, Christopher and Kunku leading from the front, as you ex would expect. You know, the signing of Timo Werner, was it necessary? Did they need him? Maybe not, but, you know, he's still come in and started to play a little bit better. Andre Silva um, is starting to play a little bit better himself. Uh, 
disappointing to not seen as much as maybe uh, as Xavier Schlager um, in that squad, but um, you know they have the squad to, to to you know go a lot further. And the fact that they're in third after 15 games, and I don't really think that they've hit anywhere near where they can hit in terms of form and and you know playing the way that they can play, then that gives you hope and momentum for, for the rest of the season, Mark. I don't know about you, but I think there's a lot of improvement still in this RB Leipzig team, but they can't just keep on showing this potential uh, and not maybe delivering on it. I don't know if that's harsh to say as well, considering how you know young as a team they are. Yeah, they, as I've said a number of times, I think in terms of squad, pure squad quality, they're the second best team in the Bundesliga for me. I just think they've got a squad absolutely packed with quality all over the park, you know what I mean? And backups as well. It's not like they're just one man deep, you know, they've got like two quality players to bring in. And I just think this is a team that should be challenging for the Bundesliga title. And I think if it wasn't for that first five games, it'd be well placed to do so. Because let's be honest, there are only six points behind Bayern and they actually host Bayern in the first game in January. So that's going to be a massive game already. You know, They're going to hope to catch uh, Bayern cold there. And if they can get a win there, they're right back in a title race. There's no question about that. So let's not like They've not been bad by any means. And I think they've been good, in fact, overall. Because as you say, just the first few games were just absolutely dreadful on so many levels. You know, they were losing games in the Bundesliga. They lost 4-1 at home to Shakhtar and Yetsk. They were just woeful before Marco Rosa came in. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't think Rosa was a particularly inspiring appointment after his time at uh, Dortmund. But he has proved to be really, really good so far. And the fans seem to like him. I didn't realise, actually, he is a local guy from Leipzig. Yeah, yeah, so that is always a good match, isn't it? Let's be honest, a local guy managing his, his team. And uh, I'm not going to say his boyhood team, because I guess when he was a boy, they weren't even a club. But yeah, it's, uh, obviously, this is a project, this club by uh, Leipzig. They got the first big title last season. And there's every reason to believe that they can go on and have a good second half of the season. I think they finished really, really strong. I don't think performance-wise, they've been like mind-blowingly good in the league. I think some of the Champions League performances were very, very good in the end, like the win at Shakhtar and the win against Real Madrid. But in the league, they've just been kind of getting the wins for me you know it probably can go up another level but it's still been satisfied more than satisfactory so far this season i'm going to give them a seven out of ten overall i think the well placed to put in a title challenge which is a minimum should be expected from this squad yeah seven is fair i think uh probably not below that but not really much above it as well because there's certainly plenty of room for improvement uh second place is being held by sc freiburg uh again kind of just voicing what i said about Union. Um, breath of fresh air, been absolutely fantastic under Christian Strike. Uh, hard, hard to kind of say more than than that, really. They've been superb from front to front to back, uh, look like a quality outfit, managed in the Europa League. Not only have they managed, they've thrived in Europe as well as keeping up this, you know, Bundesliga form, led by the fantastic Vincenzo Grifo up front. Um, you know, with, with Gregorovic, he's done really well. And, you know, Ritsi Doan, yeah, the amazing work up top. And from front to back, they're, you know, they're a squad, they're a team. Up to second place in, in the Bundesliga, <laughs> the team, in theory, that is chasing down by Munich, who would have thought that SE Freiburg would, do, would be doing this, you know, a couple of seasons ago. Yeah, Mark, probably just the same as me and, and voicing your praise for for how well this team has done in the first 15 games so far this season and, uh, well, in general, really. Yeah, it's, it's just a club that just continues to defy the odds, do you know what I mean? They're, they're just a ridiculous club in many ways in a good way because, like, it's just incredible what they're doing, you know, it truly is. Like a side that have always been known as a yo-yo club, spent a lot of time in the fight of Bundesliga in the last 10, 20 years. But now they're, they're not just um, a Bundesliga club, they're a European Bundesliga club. You know, they're a side that I can see qualifying for Europe in, in pretty much every season, as long as they manage to keep strike. And from what I've heard, strike has no intention of leaving the club as well. He's another example of what can happen when you get a local guy in charge of a club, you know, because mm. like he is a local guy and they feel more connection to the club, the fans and like, 
he probably could go and join a bigger club. I don't have any doubt, but he doesn't want to, from what I've heard. You know, and I've read articles along with Urs Fischer is another one. You know, he's also yeah. turned down other jobs that would have offered him a lot more money. But in German football, there is still an element of loyalty, and I think that's what we see from Christian Streich. I just think again, so many good performances from the Grifo has just been ridiculous at times, hasn't he? But let, let's not forget the likes of Maximilian Eggestein as well. You know, who holds it all together and Herfler. That's they're very key to that team as well. Ginter mm. has fitted in well to that side, replacing Schlotterbeck. Um, yeah, yeah, Leinart, yeah, yeah, yeah. Liner always uh, Kubler, uh, Ginter. Ginter, like all those guys, really, really kind of defy expectations year on year. You know, there's not a single. What I would say about them is there's not one weak link, basically, not one player who's not good enough to do what he does in that team. And you know, Doan has been brilliant as we we hoped. Um, it's just been superb, truly superb. And as you say, what they've done in Europe has been maybe even more impressive than what they've done in the Bundesliga because they just battered everyone in that group, didn't they? They literally did. And, you know, they beat the likes of Nantes, who I think ended up going through that group as well. They stuffed them like 4-0 away from home and I think 3-0 at home. It's just ridiculous, really. And I think I'm basically, when giving a rating, how can I give them any higher? They're second in the Bundesliga <laughs> And uh, they, they finished top of the group. So I'm going to have to give them a 10 because I don't think it can physically get any better for Freiburg at the moment. Yeah, I, I think they deserve a 10. Um, not many teams there, you'd say they've done the perfect season so far, but what, what else could they have done? Um, yeah, amazing work from, from the side. So that leads us into the current leaders of the Bundesliga and the record champions by Munich sit atop of the tree. Um for, for Christmas, the World Cup and the winter break. Uh, and, yeah, they, they've been good, uh, Mark, I think. You know, it took, uh, again, they had this this wobble, which was very uh, strange for us to see. Uh, it was pressure on Nagelsmann. They weren't quite getting it right. Teams were, you know, sitting in against them and, and getting these draws and results. But ultimately, the beast, the monster, the machine... Um, said no more, we're going to start grinding up again. And at the heart of that has been, uh, well, a, a bit of a kind of, uh, a, not a, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Not a money merchant, but someone who's kind of gone around the leagues a little bit and is now settling down into life as um, a key cog in the buying machine is uh, Eric Maxim Chupo Motting. Um, and he is now one of the key cogs uh, amongst the plethora of talent that they have. There's no point naming all the names because we know them all, their world and global superstars, most of them anyway at, at Bayern. Um, what have you made of the mark? Just very quickly, um, kind of business as usual, <clears throat> just about. But, you know, that we've seen frailties here and there. But going forwards, or sorry, just reviewing what we've seen so far has been good enough, but not vintage. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure I'd say this has been the best we've seen of Bayern since we've done the show, actually, in my opinion. I think they, they, since that September break, they've just been superb. I really do believe that. The performances have been brilliant in most cases, I think. And I just think, uh, obviously, I am filtering Europe into this a little bit, but, but let's be honest, to, to win six out of six in that group is not easy going. And on top yeah. of maintaining Bundesliga form too, and obviously they're still in the cup, I think they got through a difficult round. Yeah, they beat Augsburg away, which is quite a hard tie, considering that Augsburg beat them in the league. I know we're not really rating on the uh, overall season here. It's more on the Bundesliga, but I think it's been very good. I really do. Yeah, I think finally Nagelsmann has got a style. I don't think they had that last season. I think last season they kind of sauntered through a little bit, and especially in the Champions League, we saw some really poor performances from Bayern Munich. And this year it's been vintage in the Champions League, you know, and I just think uh, in the league, it was, as you mentioned, teams were doing, when they were playing Mane as number nine, they were really struggling, I'll be honest. They, he wasn't good enough to be a number nine, but Chupo Motting has kind of changed the season for them in a weird way. But fair play to Nagelsmann for that, because, you know, a lot of big managers wouldn't do that. They just stick, they'd stubbornly stick with Mane and say, that's what I brought him in to do, you know, and he will start scoring. But he didn't, did he? Let's be honest. And even since he's moved out to the wing, he's still not done that great, in truth, Mane. But... I just think um, Motting has been great. Musiala, as you say, is just getting going from strength to strength. Kimmy, the usual, as you mentioned, the usual guys have just been brilliant. 
I just think Mane has been the one problem for them, really. He's not been good enough and he needs to improve his performances because, you know, he's been at the team to 20 games now. And I know he's scored a few goals, but a lot of them have been penalties. And, you know, he's not been that great performance-wise. And I just think he's been the one problem. But I'd still give them an eight myself. Yeah, I think it's been very satisfactory, very good. You know, they've had some amazing performances, like when they beat Freiburg 5-0, you know, and I just think... They've been very good, so it's it's an eight for me. Yeah, turned it on when they needed to, uh, like the champions that they are. So, yeah, an eight out of ten is probably a good way to finish what's been actually quite a, quite a long show for us. Um, very rare that we go near an hour, but we're well over that. But it's been nice to kind of do it and take our time, as it's obviously the last show uh, that <clears> we'll be doing for for a little while certainly live um so thank you for everyone for tuning in for watching live now and, and for everyone that will watch the show uh very much appreciate everyone's support so far this season from right at the beginning of previewing for all our watch alongs and everything else um you know we've had a blast so far um we'll obviously be taking a little bit of a break now but we'll still be working uh, in in the background, whirring away, and myself and Mark will be trying to get a few few extra bits out during uh, the World Cup and the winter break. Uh, however, it will be a lot less frequent, um, unfortunately, until we are back in action, which will be no doubt be an incredibly an incredibly busy period for us both, Mark. But um, I guess it's time to close up tonight's show and close up the first half of the season as well. Definitely, yeah. So if you enjoyed what you saw today, then at Over the Bar FB and at Over the Bar Extra, our Twitter feeds, you can check out all our latest stuff. Remember, we also do written articles as well, so you can check that out on there. Yeah, we've also got, um, sorry, yeah, we've also got the otbfootball.net uh, main site, which is where you can see links to all of the stuff that we publish. Yeah, and also don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. But yeah, thanks a lot for your continued support and Merry Christmas to everyone. See you in 2023. Bye bye, guys. See you then.